Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today's card project features a very easy way to use pattern paper and then to use those colors to choose your ink colors for coloring. You know that coloring isn't really my thing. It's not really my thing, but I do it and I practice and I get more confident every time I do. Stick around to see this cool way to use pattern paper, not only for the design, but to inspire your ink choices for your markers. That video is coming up next. Here's a look at the card I'll be creating today. And initially I was going to mix and match the pattern papers to paper piece in the word love. But in the end, I kept it very simple and I used the colors from the pattern paper to inform the color of my gnome. Let's take a look at the products I'm using today. Here is the very cool love die from My Favorite Thing Stamps. And check it out, it's just a big old love word. That's the size. It will fit right into a US A2 card size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half tall. And here's the pattern paper pad. And I just love all these plaids. They're very sweet. I thought the mix and match was gonna work, but you know, changed my mind. And then this is the really cute little love to my Nomi's die set. So. Those are the basics, and now we'll get started. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the love word out of a four and a quarter by five and a half tall panel. This is Nina Solar White Classic Crest cardstock, so nice and sturdy in the 110 pound. Pop that out, and then you will see I have the word cut out of the panel. Of course, I will preserve the centers of the O and the E. Then I'll go ahead and cut the same love out of just one of the patterns. And this is where, you know, in my mind, I was gonna go with all kinds of different patterns and just mix and match. But once I saw the love just kind of laid out, I thought, no, we're keeping it simple. You don't have to overthink with the pattern paper. Let's keep it simple. I'm gonna go ahead and score my card base at five and a half. This is a half sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock so that it folds down into the four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. Then it's time to just mount the panel that I cut the love out of onto the card base. So I'm just gonna coat the whole front of the card base with some dot runner, all right, and get a good coating on. And I wanna put it not only all on the edges, but I want to go in the center so that I have some adhesive that I can adhere the inlaid pattern paper letters on. So I'll grab my score buddy. This is one of my favorite ways to line things up. Just press it into the corner. You can do this with a misty tool as well. Just anything with a corner. Press it all in together and it's a no fuss way to line up one panel on another. Now see that I've got that adhesive there so I can piece in the patterns for a beautiful inlaid look. This is very simple too. It's such a great way to create something that doesn't have a ton of dimension, right? You're just laying in patterns and letters, but I think this is just a really fun way to get more use out of pattern paper. And then of course, I'll just pop in the last center there on the E, and now we have one nice, smooth, inlaid love word on the panel. I love that look. It's nice and sleek, but you also have some visual texture. I thought that this little Nomi with the envelope would be perfect. So I will stamp this little guy down on some of the 110 pound Nina Solar White Classic Crest as well. This is a brand new stamp to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda rub my finger over it a little to get that residue off from manufacturing, ink up with some Memento Tuxedo Black, and press him down. I'll grab my Debbie tool, my stamp press tool here. And while I'm at it, I might as well just ink it up again to get that really nice dark impression. It's one of the things I love about the Misty. If you don't like your first impression, you just stamp it in the exact same place again. And then what I'm going to do off camera is I'll stamp a second gnome down here just because I always like a backup. Now this is when I grab my little swatch ring. This swatch ring is for my Copic markers. It is not scientifically arranged. It is just arranged by color. And I will pop a card up to the video that shows how I made this ring. 
but I do this just when I'm keeping marker coloring simple, right? I don't, I don't understand the intricacies of the Copic numbering system. I just look at the colors and think to myself, oh, that would match the paper, and that's literally how I choose my colors. I guess if I were more seasoned with my Copics, maybe I would just know, oh, well, RV00 is going to be fantastic, but I don't know that. So having a little swatch ring really does help me just pick some colors that I think will work, and that's all I'm doing here. In fact, the RVOO, that water lily, you know, if you just have one color, you can go over the color again, just like I'm doing, to add a little tone-on-tone -tone shading. It's simple. It's not like the dramatic shading that you will see some of the Copic Masters do, but you know what? It's going gonna, it's gonna to look pretty cute in the end. And I'm making his body in this BG11, which again is going to match the pattern paper. So that was it. I looked at that pattern paper, I looked at my swatch ring, and I just picked colors that would match that paper. And that's how I'm going to get this really harmonious little Nomi to put on this card. Little gray legs, little, I don't know what, oh, C7. I couldn't see what I was doing there. Copa coloring is not easy for me, you know? And I always replace, well, not always, but most of the time I replace my brush, no, the chisel nibs with these little fine nibs which help me to control the coloring. You can see a fine nib right up there in the upper right on the BG11. You can buy those separately and pop them in the chisel end, and then you're good to go. I've got the coordinating die. I'm going to tape that into place so it doesn't shift. I usually tape top and bottom just because they, those suckers tend to move. And I'll go ahead and cut that out on the die cut machine. See, I still have that backup. I think sometimes when I stamp the back up, it actually increases my chances that I'm not going to screw up. Maybe I'm superstitious. Do you know, are you superstitious? No. Now that was not the perfect cut. I think I got him a little off, but you know what? Perfection only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Is that, is that the phrase? I think I got it. I think I got it. I'm going to put some thin foam squares on the back, kind of give him some dimension. And also don't be afraid to cut them right? Cut them really thin, especially if you've got really small areas that you want to pop up, like his little legs. You know, you can't put a full foam square on a little leg, so cut them and then use a, use a craft pick to place them. Oh, I love it. So great. Now I'll remove all of the backers off the thin foam squares, and I'm going to pop him right there. I think that is so stinking cute. Just that they have, I mean, I'm sure they designed it with this in mind, right? Is it just me? I think that is super cute. Love. And now we're going to fill in that sort of open space below the V. You could put a greeting there, right? A sub greeting, but I decided to add shiny sequins and boop. Sorry, I missed the first boop. One right there in the O. Love that. Come on, glue. There you go. Boop. And I love the five sequin arrangement. Oh, some squeezed out there. And the last one. Boop. A nice odd number. I just love how that looks. A little bit of shine on a very clean and simple card. Now, we probably could use a greeting, right? So, I think we will stamp on the inside. A lot of people ask me, Kathy, don't you ever stamp on the inside of your card? And the answer is, yes, I do. And I am committed to showing that more often. Now, you can use your MISTI tool for this as well, but I do like to practice occasionally with what I call free-range stamping, where you stamp with, a, with an acrylic block. And I know if you're an old-school stamper, you're like, dude, that's how we did it for years. I'm like, well, you may have, but I personally, I did not. So I like to practice every now and then just to, you know, make sure I still have some skill. Or, wait, I didn't have skill. Develop new skills. There you go. I'm going to ink this up with the same tuxedo black, and I just brought in that little scrap that I stamped the other guy on to practice. Especially if it's a new stamp, I like to practice because I tend to mess up. And I love this little Make Art Station for this because those magnets, they hold everything open. The surface is firm, and I prefer when I'm stamping with a block to have a firmer surface underneath as opposed to my mat because I feel like I'm able to get a more even impression. And we'll press that down. I rocked it a little. If this stamp is rocking, don't come a knocking. I don't know. 
but that's not the same. But you know what? I would give that a 9.5 out of 10, maybe even a 9.9, .9. but now I have my greeting on the inside, sending some love your way for my cute little gnome love card. And that, my friends, is the finished card project. I hope this inspires you the next time you're looking to include some pattern paper on your card projects. You don't have to overthink it. Use just one. You'd be surprised at how beautiful the finished result will be. And then use that pattern paper to help you pick the colors for your little cutie stamped patootie. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.